and um, finish off at the Harvest Health Fair, which is brought to you by the Fit Labs Daily Kitchen and Las Vegas Cyclery. And it's basically focusing on really awesome food, uh, the latest in fitness and um, a wellness and conscious living. So it's actually really cool. You can come and eat. And if you'd like to walk across the street as well during that, there's the Gardens Park having the Summerlin Pumpkin Festival at the same time. Ooh. So there's so many awesome things to kind of eat, and I think you're going to be feeling very well at the end of the Saturday. So much so, by the way, you can get tickets for $15 off Ticket Cake. But if you're feeling extra well and you kind of want to ruin that a little bit. Yes, you want to ruin that health. <laughs> on the same day, on the Saturday the 5th again, we have the Grapes and Hops Festival. And that's going to be starting at 5 p.m. So there's plenty of time to get your health on during the day and uh, get your booze on at night. That's going to be held at Springs Preserve, which is a super pretty place, especially at 5 p.m. as the sun is setting. So you definitely want to get down to this. You're going to be joining wine connoisseurs and beer enthusiasts from throughout southern Nevada. Now, it's going to be raising money for a really great cause. The cause is called Path for the Cure, and it's a benefit organiza uh, sorry, a, a organization dedicated to raising funds for breast cancer. So super cool. Um, again, you have the perfect excuse to drink for charity. I love it. <laughs> and $35 for tickets in advance, or if you'd like to go with your significant other, it's only $60 for both of you to go. So that sounds like pretty good value for me. You do actually get um, unlimited wine, beer, and food samples. So that's pretty good value to me. Uh, you can find out more information on springspreserve.org. Coming up next is the 555 Downtown Las Vegas dinner. Now, Dylan, you've been yeah, to one of these before, much. right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but yeah, but they have different chefs doing each one of the courses, and it was an awesome Excellent. experience. I mean, the place was jam packed, and I met a lot of great people. Well, that sounds awesome. So yeah. they're doing it again, and that's going to be on the 13th of October, so you do have a bit of a rest from that crazy weekend. And the next weekend, you can come to this. Um, it's brought to you by the Vegas Real Food Project, and this time it's called Dinner on the Farm. So it's actually going to be held on a farm instead of in downtown Las right. Vegas. Uh, it's held fun. at the Cowboy Trail Farms, which I heard is a really cool place to really comforting and, and lovely. And their dinner on the farm, um, the funds that they raise from that is going to go towards the Project 150, which is a charity dedicated to assisting the homeless and disadvantaged high school students, which is a really super awesome cause. Like, yeah. I think that's really important. So, um, yeah, the Meet the Neighbors starts at 5.30 p.m. on that night, and 6 p.m. is when the food all starts coming out, and it's five-course meal, so that's really awesome. You can buy tickets on Ticket Cake. Now, I'm actually very privileged tonight to be sitting in between my two favorite Dylans. <laughs> yeah, you're in the Dylan sandwich. So the next... <laughs> what? That's what? He came up with that one. I just I copied it because it. it's funnier well, than I'm, I can think oh, of. I'm a fat kid. No, I <laughs> well, I love you guys. You guys are awesome. And uh, Dylan's here to talk about Rails Rumble. And that's run by the Las Vegas Ruby Users Group. And I have actually gone down to a meeting since I spoke to Judd a few episodes ago. Really, really cool. You guys are really inviting, very welcoming, and very smart, too. The talks were really awesome. So you're going to be having like an entire 48-hour event soon? Tell me about that. We are. Actually, it's an international event. It's not wow. just just the uh, Las Vegas Ruby group. Okay. It's every Ruby developer internationally. There's going to be 500 teams, okay. and you have 48 hours from Friday at 5 to Sunday at 5. Just that's your, that's your box that you have to play in. And it has to be a rack app, um, which Rails is a rack app. So there's more to Ruby than just Rails. So, oh, okay. <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a good time. I mean, there'll be a lot of uh, hashtag Ruby and hashtag Rails going on. So, Excellent. Yeah, definitely watch out for Twitter because you know it's kind of a running commentary. It's you like know, a people live People are like, look at this and uh, wow. That. And is there going to be like prizes and things like that? There are prizes at the end. Last year, one of our team placed ninth. So that was pretty impressive. Out of 500 teams internationally that our local group uh, placed ninth. It's going to be at wow. Cobiz, uh, okay. which is on Tanay and Rainbow. Fantastic. So it's a great co-working space. And everyone's invited to come hang out and, and um, hack on some code. There's going to be teams between one and four. And you know, may the best team win. Okay, so there's a deadline for registering though, right? There oh, is. There's a challenge in there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just, yeah. Just, yeah unfortunately, I think it seems fair, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, this packed, it's uh, on this packed weekend on Friday the 4th is mm -hmm. when you have to volunteer or sign up for it. Okay. You can go to our uh, uh, LV, lvrug.org, okay. and that will redirect to our meetup group, and it's going to be posted on there. Fantastic. So, yeah. And uh, we want to show the rest of the world that, yeah, Las Vegas has an awesome tech community, we so do. we definitely want to place. Again. Again. That would be awesome. Yeah, hopefully we can move up that list. Um, what we're looking for, though, is designers. We have a lot of smart people, but we really need 
uh, designers. Are you because... saying design is not smart, Dylan? Come no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a different <laughs> skill set. Ah, gosh, yeah. the foot in the mouth. I told them I wouldn't do this. Uh, <laughs> no, like, you know, it, we have some great designers, but you, you need that other side. Like, you, you can make the best app in the world, but if it just looks like Twitter bootstrap, you're yes. not going to win. Yeah, so that's very true. we need some creative people to come and, and, and help us out. And so if you're, if you're down to do this, please come and check us out. It's a great opportunity, great time. Very cool. Yeah, I can, I can definitely say that the, the community is really welcoming. So anyone who's never been to a, a like a Las Vegas Ruby group meetup, um, it doesn't matter. You should still definitely get down for that and join up with the team. Well, thank you. I look forward to hearing yes. about the results of that event as well. It's going to so be awesome. I. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate thank you. it. Cheers. And that's the event for this week. I think so. Yeah, Qual qualify for the Act Academy. I, I think he could teach. Okay, so okay, so what we're gonna do in a second is uh, I'm gonna jump into a character, and he's actually gonna do an interview with me. But first off, let me introduce who our next guest, Tony Plana. This could be one of your first podcasts. I think it is. It. So it, is my, it is my first. Podcast. Yeah. So welcome to the new the new media. Thank I like you. it. Thank you. Okay, but so back in the day, he was in 62 major motion pictures, including two, and over 200 TV episodes. Some of the notable roles were uh, the Academy Award winning Officer and a Gentleman. You were Ugly Betty's dad on the hit ABC TV show, and. Uh, you were also on Seinfeld, 24, Desperate House Rives. And then the coolest thing, I thought, actually, I got the, um, if you guys haven't seen, check him out in the newest movie, Pain and Gain, which is now on DVD. Um, you actually had a, an awesome role in this, and this movie, I heard, has been doing a great job. And Amazing. But you missed my favorite credit. Oh, what's your favorite one? I mean, there's I so played, many to go through. I played the Mexican bandit El Jefe in Three Amigos. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how did that slip by? It, it, it requires some real method acting. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Steve Martin went toe to toe. Right. So, uh, but you actually have a personal passion for education, and that's what I want to talk about today. So, you created the East LA Classic Theater in Los Angeles, which is a um, it's a it's a school that actually teaches by using the arts, right? So, I know you described it in a pre-interview as sort of the place where arts and science kind of merge. It's a yes. new way of thinking about the way that we we learn. I, I think we should dive into and see if they can maybe apply it to the downtown community. So let's hop into it. Okay, uh, I, it started from kind of a Hollywood Shuffle experience. You know what that? You know what I mean by that? You ever seen the movie by Robert Townsend called Hollywood Shuffle? It's about the black experience in Hollywood. You okay. know, and and what I mean by that is that a lot of us who had the equivalent of you know bachelor's and master's degrees in 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 uh, in college, you know, would show up at these casting sessions pretending we were gang members. Okay. And none of us had been gang members, except that we put on these fake tattoos and hair nets and bandanas, and, right, right. you know. And then I go, we go to each other like, you know, like, you know, Carnegie Mellon. Yeah, yeah. Like, and then we just or, oh, we go, we go like, Juilliard, brother. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, and, and so. And, but but that's that that was the you know when we started back in the day which was like middle 70s late 70s that's the kind of roles that that you know African Americans and Hispanic Americans were you know were asked to read for we were asked to we're play stereotype for yeah we're right, stereotype gotcha. so yeah. um, a lot of us from Juilliard I went to RADA in London Carnegie Mellon a lot of my friends who were African American and black, who had to pretend we were gang members to be on television, we um, we had all been trained in Shakespeare. So right. one of the, one of the cool things we did is we wanted to create Shakespeare uh, adaptations and present them to minority children. And what we did is we started setting up like. Um, workshops to introduce the kids to the plays so they could understand the plot and then we would talk to the kids after the plays you know, okay, yeah, after yeah, performing yeah. them and we we realized how cool it was for actors and children to get together it's like I told you right uh, actors are children trapped in <laughs> yeah, adult true, bodies yeah. so they go their imaginations yeah, yeah right yeah, so like that, yeah. you know you're you know uh, uh, actors are playful adults and children are playful Right. Um, so we really, we really uh, keyed into that 
chemistry. And we wanted to extend the time we spent with children. And we looked for ways where we could help the children do better in school. And one of the ways that we felt we had, um, um, you know, we could best contribute would be to um, help the children develop better communication skills. Right. So we, we, we thought about the whole idea of, of combining the performing arts with learning language, because a lot of them have language issues. We thought the performing arts were the best way to, you know, um, to do this. And, and this is 15 years ago. Right. You know, so we were right, ahead right, of the right, curve yeah. in, in exploring this area. And the more the more we got into it, the deeper we got into it, the more convinced we were that we were on the right track. Right. And, well, and that's what I love about it, because all this neuroscience now is pointing towards how powerful the imagination is for getting over this. But you guys really were doing it before everyone yeah, else. So you got the and, best. Yeah, and we, yeah. we did. And we found out that most of your dropouts are kinesthetic learners, meaning that they have to interact with what they're learning. Right. That they can't just sit in a desk and learn yeah, auditorily yeah. and then yeah. process the information and regurgitate. But Brim Van Winkle's a story. So if, if he was asleep for 100 years and he came back today, the place where he'd still be most comfortable would be today's classroom. Because it hasn't changed in 100 years. It's still one person in front of a blackboard speaking to people in desks and communicating information. So we said, let's throw away these desks throw away the chairs and change up the dynamics in the classroom. You know? I love it, I love and, it, yeah. And, and, and have the classroom be as interesting, entertaining, engaging as the outside world where they have amazing uh, screens and phones and computers and, and video games. The classroom- like make them want to go to school. Exactly, yeah, because saying, the yeah. classroom has to compete with the outside world. You, you can't expect people who live in the outside world that are super interesting and engaging and interactive come into a classroom and not be interactive. How can that be attractive to them? Right. And forced to learn in a certain way that they're not ready to learn. So the dropouts, 90% of them, are kinesthetic learners. They can't learn the way we're trying to heal. That's where they're dropping out. Right. African American children and, and Latino children are, are experiencing four to five times the disciplinary actions of their counterparts. Why? They're bored or challenged in the classroom and they can't process. Right. So they get in trouble and they're put on a, on a, on a railroad right to jail. <laughs> so they're, they're going, they're, a lot of them are being incarcerated yeah. eventually yeah. and that's costing society uh, on so many levels. I mean, not just in terms of wasting human resources, but also, you know, like uh, having to cost us to incarcerate, incarcerate them when there's like a hundred thousand dollar difference between incarcerating someone and not making right. them productive citizens. If they're productive, if they're educated, they're contributing, you know, right. uh, $30,000 a year per person on the average in terms of income tax, property tax, and sale tax. Right. And if you Not put them in prison, it costs you 50, yeah. 60,000. If you add it up together aggregately, you know, you're spending 90 to 100,000 to incarcerate somebody.